Welcome to Season 8, Episode 18 of the Ubuntu Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be reviewing the Pebble Time and have a first look at the BQE5 and Meizu MX4 Ubuntu phones. I'm Laura, and joining me this week are Alan. Hello, hello. Uh, Mark. Hello. And Martin. Good evening. <laughs> so what have we been got doing since last time? Alan? What have we been got doing? Yeah, what have we what been, been up doing? to? <laughs> well, been... uh, we went out for curry. Mm. We did. That was a good Which curry. was delicious. We all in went am- out for curry and beer. In Amazing Stoke. Ama- yes, Amazing Grad was uh, our host. And uh, yeah, that was good fun. And uh, we should do that again sometime. We should. We really should. And in, yeah. in the meantime, yeah. I've been using Tab Suspender in uh, Chrome. <laughs> yes. Uh, to keep my tabs <laughs> up. Uh, no, it's it pauses tabs when you're not using them in Chrome. And that means that my laptop doesn't eat, uh, the CPU doesn't get eaten up. And, and so, yes, that's very good. And I like Oh, it. that sounds very good. Is, can you get such a thing for Firefox? I expect you probably can. Other browsers are available. Is it a, an, an extension? Yes. You just install Tab Suspender and there's a few options. Uh, like you can tell it how long you want it to suspend, uh, how long you want to leave it before you suspend a tab. Mm-hmm. And the, the title bar goes grey, so you know they're suspended. Um, it kind of grays out, fades out a little bit. And, uh, when you go back to the tab, you can, you can, you can choose not to wake it up. So you can go back to a tab, but actually not wake it up. So it just shows you statically what was in there the last time you were there. And if you push your mouse over the button, it, it, it reloads it. Um, it's, it's quite nice. Um, but you can also set things like, uh, which tabs get suspended and which ones don't. You can set exceptions. So for example, my Gmail, I've got set never suspend that one. Um, oh, so it keeps cool. getting the mail. Yeah, that one's always getting mail, but some of the others, like, I've got a bug open on Launchpad that doesn't keep getting, you know, woken up or other, other, like Google Docs, for example, it'll suspend a Google Doc so I don't keep getting the updates from other people. It's quite good. Yeah, I thoroughly recommend it. Cool. Tab suspender. Mark? I've been playing Borderlands 2. Which is? <laughs> so, uh, there's, there's currently a, a humble bundle available called the Humble Borderlands bundle, which has Borderlands, Borderlands 2, and Borderlands the pre-sequel, which is a sort of integral game between the other two. Um, uh-huh. The first one isn't available for Linux, but the others are. So I've been playing Borderlands 2, which is like a sort of um, open-world adventure first-person shooter type game with a bizarre sense of humour. And does it run under wine? No, you no, no. So you can person? run the you can run Borderlands under wine if you want, but Borderlands Two runs natively, and the pre sequel runs natively as well. Cool. And you awesome. get was oh, it uh, a super cheap deal on Humble? Yes. So you get um, well, you get Borderlands and Borderlands Two and a load of DLC and seventy five percent off the pre sequel in the Humble Store for uh, currently just under seven dollars. And you get some more DLC if you pay fifteen dollars or more. Bargain. Yes, it is an absolute bargain, and uh, yes, I've been playing quite a lot. Cool, Martin. Well, uh, it was my daughter's birthday, so I spent a weekend uh, mostly dressed as a pirate <laughs> and entertaining uh, hordes of young children. Excellent. It's a sight to behold. Uh, normal a, weekend, uh, then. <laughs> a normal weekend for me, yeah, yeah. Uh, this pirate costume is now making uh, regular appearances at uh, birthday parties around my area. Um, uh, and, and on technical news, um, I've got my BQ Aquarius E5 HD Ubuntu edition, so I've been getting to grips with that. And uh, in my spare time, I've been doing some development work on Ubuntu Mate. Cool. Laura, what have you been up to? I have been playing with the new MX4 Ubuntu phone and running a lot. Are we going to talk uh, more about the MX4 at some point? Yes. And the E5, all the all the Ubuntu phones? All the Ubuntu phones. Super. Yep. Should we do that then? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So recently we've been uh, reviewing a fair amount of hardware and we've got another one for you. Uh, I 
backed a thing on Kickstarter some time ago, and it arrived last week, and it's called a Pebble Time, and it's a smartwatch, and I have it on my wrist right now, and it's awesome, and I like Yay. it. Yes. You're going to send us so, a photo um, off of the show notes? Oh, yes. I will. Actually, I took a photo outside earlier, so yes, I will. Uh, you'll get my arm and a smartwatch in it. Cool. So it's... um. It's yeah. It's a watch goes on your wrist. There was a, an original Pebble that was back in April two thousand and twelve, and that raised ten million dollars from seventy odd thousand backers. And uh, you could send apps to it over Bluetooth, and it had a very small, low resolution display, um, and a few buttons, and a vibrating motor, and an accelerometer, and stuff. And then this second one, which uh, the Kickstarter launched in February last year, twenty fourteen. That got twice as much money, 20 million US dollars wow. from 78,000 backers. Um, it's that finished and, um, the mine arrived a couple of weeks ago, uh, or a week or so ago. And so that's like 16 months from the start of the campaign cool. through till actually getting the thing in my hand. Wow. Um, it's quite cool. And was it yeah. worth the wait? Uh, yeah, I, well, I kind of drunkenly ordered it. Uh, I, I, it was one of those things that I, I'd set a reminder on Kickstarter and, uh, I got the reminder and I looked at it and I went, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I quite fancy one of those. And I, it had just been payday. So I thought, yeah, I'll get one. So I think I paid something like $179 and now, which is 115 quid, and now they're 179 pounds retail. Cool. Um, so yeah, I got one a bit cheaper. Um, so it's it's an always on color e paper display. The original Pebble was a black and white display. Uh, it's nine and a half mil thick, water resistant. They claim the battery lasts up to ni- up to seven days. I haven't seen that. I think you get up to seven days if you don't use it. If you leave it on the desk and don't connect it to anything, <laughs> I think that's the absolute theoretical maximum. Right. Um, or you have no friends, so you get no notifications, right? And you get no email. So what do you um, actually get? So it's got this timeline user interface thing that lets you see your appointments. So you can very quickly see what uh, events are coming. So I, I have quite a full calendar with work and I've, I've got it showing my work calendar and my personal calendar. And it's quite nice to be able to just scroll through and see what's coming up. So I'll use my calendar a lot more given that on my wrist I can just quickly see what's coming up. But the, the, the main thing that it does, mine does all the time is notifications so the notifications you would normally see on the front of your phone they come to your wrist um and it's everything like well you can filter it you don't don't have to see everything um but it it shows you notifications um and you can you can you can set it up however you want whether you want like everything or just a few little you know pings now and then for various things cool so which end of the scale um, have you gone have you gone more towards the everything or more towards the few I've got everything. Right. I got I got it out of the box, and so you get it out of the box, and it comes with a uh, charging cable, but no charger. There's just the, the watch on a strap and a charging cable and a little piece of paper, and that's it in the box. Um, because the charging cable has got a magnetic thing on one end that goes on the back of the watch, um, and the other end is a USB connector. So you just plug it into any old USB charger or directly into a laptop to charge the the uh, the 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 watch um it lasts I'd, I'd say probably about four days maybe five at a push but i get a lot of email and a lot of notifications so the little battery is is doing a lot more work than maybe some people might so some people might get longer than that if they get you know i get a lot of email from launchpad telling me like bugs statuses and stuff like that so and i get a notification for every single one so is that not annoying for, for yeah, it is, yeah. So I, I need to dial back my uh, email filters and uh, notifications and stuff. And that, then I'll see the stuff that's important, really. Um, but you, the, the thing is, you manage it from a companion app. You have to have an app on a Android or iOS device. And I happen to have an Android device, so I installed it on that. And then it connects to the, the watch, and then you manage it from the phone or the, from the Android device. So you, you tell it um, what notifications you want and uh, you can install additional applications there's a whole store that you access through this android or ios app and then you send things to the watch and it's pretty much instant you say like get that app and it's just pretty much instantly on your device it's pretty cool cool so the kinds of things uh that you get 
you can get watch faces, which you know once you've once you've tried a few watch faces, you know that <laughs> that gets a bit old pretty quickly. Um, I mean, there's some there's some quite funky ones. The one I've got on there at the moment is quite cute. Um, there's fitness tracking apps, uh, so you know counts your steps and all that kind of stuff. There's time management. There's a few games in there which are hilarious because it's not got a touch screen, unlike the Apple Watch it, or the the Android ones, the Android Wear ones. It's not touch screen. It's got four buttons around the edge. Right. It's like old on school games. Side, yeah, it, the, yeah, they really are. <laughs> so on one side, it's got a back button. And on the other side, it's got three buttons, like up, down, and a selector in the middle. And so the, there's a couple of games that I've got on here. One is like Super Sprint. I don't know if you remember Super Sprint, where you drive around a track. I do. With four little red, yellow, green, blue cars. And the only controller you have is left and right, which you press with these two hardware buttons. And when the thing's on your wrist, like it's... Really hard. It's quite <laughs> hilarious, but it's really hard. It's it's completely impractical, but I think it's just a demo of what it can do. Um, what resolution screen of, is it? Um, I'm not sure what res it is. It's it's similar to the original one. It's a couple of hundred pixels by a couple of hundred. It's not it's not very high res. Um, but then my eyesight's going, so if if there were tiny pixels, I wouldn't be able to see them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but there's there's quite a funky app that I've got on there called um, FitCat. Um, and uh, it's uh, a little cat, like a Tamagotchi cat, <laughs> that uh, you feed, and you get money for doing steps. So the more I walk, the more money I get, and the more I can spend on my cat. Um, <laughs> and I can buy him food, buy him toys and stuff, and decorate his house. And every so often I'll look at my watch and see what the cat's doing. And right now he's laying in front of the fireplace, snoozing. But another time I'll look at my watch and he's got his head down the toilet drinking <laughs> from, from the loo. Or he's in his... Um, in his um, thing, doing a poo. Or just something. like your real cat. It's, it's, just, yeah. Yeah, just like it's like you know, if I'm ever away from home, I've got my cat with me, my portable fit cat. But it's, it's quite silly. So, would you recommend if somebody wants? Well, I mean, generally, would you recommend someone get a smart watch as a device? And would you recommend the Pebble in particular? So, one of the reasons I I was interested in the Pebble as opposed to the. Um, iWatch or the Android Wear ones is the the Apple one is absolutely tied to iOS. Yeah. You know, you 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 can't get away from that. Plus it's ridiculously expensive and it's got a terrible battery life. And all of those things were negatives for me. I don't I don't want something tied to iOS. I don't want something that's got one day battery life. Um I don't want to be forced to charge this thing because part of the, the the nice thing about this the Pebble is that it'll wake you up in the morning. So I've set an alarm on it and it vibrates my on my wrist and wakes me up. And the cool thing about that is nobody else in the house gets woken up. So it's not like a clock radio mm. where everyone gets woken up by the sound of the radio. This little thing buzzing on my wrist wakes me up and doesn't disturb anyone, which is yeah, a selling point for me. Um, and I didn't want an Android one for the similar reasons. I didn't really want something that only tied directly into Android. Now, the problem is the Pebble at the moment only ties to iOS and Android. Um, but there are open source tools. There's something called Lib Pebble. Um, and there's an app on the Yola phone. So, you know, potentially there could be an app on Ubuntu. And I know a bunch of canonical people have bought them. So, you know, potentially there could be an app in Ubuntu in the future. Cool. So, yes, in answer to your Excellent. question, uh, of all of the smart watches, this is the one I get because it's the most open and hackable right. compared to the others. Um, there's, a, so. there's a thing called smart straps that they've made. Because the connector on the bottom of the watch is close to the, the watch strap, you can get these, or they've, they've made a design where the strap can reach under the phone and touch the, the pins, the pogo pin uh, plug on the bottom of the phone, uh, the bottom of the watch, so that you could add additional functionality in the strap. So that could be additional sensors, it could be indicators, lights, it could be another screen, it could be like anything in oh. the strap. Which extends it and makes it a lot more open and extendable than than either of the others. So you can hack the hardware a bit more. Yeah, as well as the software, you can and you can like they've got a developer kit and it seems pretty straightforward to create apps um, for it as well. Is it pretty the watch? Uh, mm, mm. <laughs> uh, uh, That's a no. I get. Um, is it, I guess. Is it utilitarian? It's <laughs> it's not ThinkPad utilitarian. Um, I've got a dark grey one. You can get them with a, like a bright red strap, you know, which helps. Um, and it's it's quite cute. The user interface is really cute, and it's got some nice animated effects. I mean, given that this is e-paper and it's not like a super vibrant LCD display. Yeah, that's really cool. That it's e-paper. Yeah, which yeah you know, helps the battery life. I I like it. I really like it. And 
I look forward to there being more apps for it. I mean, there's a, there's a few interesting ones on here that I've got at the moment. There's one called, um, one of the default apps is a music app. Uh, now, you're not going to listen to music on your watch, but you can control your music app on your phone from your watch. Okay. So you can just, like, tap the buttons on the watch to navigate backwards and forwards through tracks. So, like, at the weekend, I was, uh, I was away from home, and I put the watch in a bag... So I didn't actually have the watch in my pocket. It was actually in a bag underneath the table. But I could still control like the notifications and I could control the phone from my my wrist, which which was quite cool, I think. Hmm. So yes, I probably Excellent. would buy one. Uh, <laughs> yes. Get one, they're awesome. Make apps for it and make uh, an Ubuntu app for it. So I can use it with Ubuntu and I don't have to use Android anymore. Oh yeah. Awesome. Mm. But if anyone has any questions about it um, or, or suggestions or feedback, then uh, send that to show at ubuntupodcast.org. Excellent. Right, we that's not all the hardware we have to review this week. No. Nope. Oh, yes. In fact, I'm the only one without hardware to review this week. So, that's... Well, you were lucky last time. You had yeah. double bubble hardware. <laughs> so we actually have two Ubuntu phones, um, which are going to be... Uh, used over the next uh, next few weeks, respectively, by Laura and Martin. But um, mm-hmm. we were going to do a sort of first impressions um, today, and then we'll or come see- back to them for a more in-depth experience review later on. Or see how far we get, anyway. Or see how far you get, yes. So yeah. this is, you're both yeah. attempting to use them as your, your main phone. Yes. Is that right? Cool. Yes. I'm going to start that exercise tomorrow. Right. So far, I've just been getting orientated, so I'm ready to start cool. that. Well, Martin, do you want to talk about your shall phone I kick, first? Shall I kick off? Okay, so I've got the BQ Aquarius uh, e, uh, E5 Ubuntu Edition. Um, the hardware itself um, is light and flat, and it looks like an iPhone 5 based on my friends that have got iPhone 5s. It's a smaller phone that I'm used to, but I found it to be very usable despite that. Um, the power button I, I keep um, missing. It's in an inconvenient spot. Um, but I do like the dual SIM option that it has in it. So I've got a cheap £1 per week SIM in it and also my 3 mobile broadband. And in terms of my first impressions, I've broken it down into the good, the bad and the ugly. Um, so the good is, since I last used Ubuntu Touch in March earlier this year, I can see the improvements that have been made. Um, the updated core app, there's, um, the, app, the core apps have been updated and there's more refinement in the apps in the store. Um, the predictions on the keyboard are better than I remember. They're not perfect yet, but they're much improved. And some of the native apps in the store, like Podbird, which is a podcatcher, and Deco, which is an email client, have really come a long way in the last few months. Uh, the standout feature is that the battery life is epic. Um, Right now I've got got it in front of me and it's 169 hours <laughs> since the last charge with 56% That's remaining. Insane. Now that sort, wow. that sort of implies that I've not been using it as my exclusive device yet. But when you put it, you know, when you power off the screen and put it down, literally the battery gauge doesn't move until the next time you pick it up. And that can be a couple of days later, which is amazing. It, I mean, that is really terrific. Um, I like the gesture-based controls. I wasn't sure about them the first time I used these, um, you know, a couple of versions ago, but um, it's, they've really grown on me. Um, it's got more scopes than the Nexus 4 had, which makes it more useful. Uh, Google account integration just works, so contact calendar, email, G+, and I sent a patch to Alan's YouTube app, so that supports online account integration now. Uh, the camera is surprisingly good. I took some photographs of my daughter's um, school sports day using um, the E5, and they were very, very good. I was genuinely surprised. Um, it was preloaded with a few apps from BQ, and I was able to just uninstall those in the usual, fa- fa- usual way with no fuss or mess, which is brilliant because if, the, if you've got stuff on the phone and you don't want it, you can easily remove it. When it's connected to Bluetooth in my car, Podbird works just as well as um, my Android and Pocket Cast solution does, but it's not ideal, and I'll get to that. Um, and there's lots of alternative web apps in the Click Store that are better than the canonical core web apps. <coughs> and uh, lastly, um, there's more developers now working on Ubuntu Touch, and by developers, I mean in the community, and there's more reference code available. So I've 
been having a lot of fun improving my own apps and creating new apps. And I'll talk about some of the not so good stuff well, maybe in a month from now when I've lived with the device for a bit longer. <laughs> okay. Yes. So I, I mean, I, I find it uh, interesting. The uh, camera is uh, so good because I found the camera on the four point five quite bad. Um, and you, Laura, you've got the four point five, haven't you? Have you used the camera much? Um, on that first day that we got it, I took a picture with it, and we got slammed on Twitter. Then people go, "Oh, it's a terrible picture." Um, but actually, it wasn't too. You were drunk though, weren't you? Yeah, and it was, <laughs> and it was inside in crappy lighting, and yeah, it doesn't do well in low light. No, that, that camera. Um, so I'm pleased to see the E5 is better. That's good. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not the only one that's reported those improvements on the E5 either. Marco Costales has pointed the same out. Cool. In a review that he did online. So you're going to save the bad and the ugly for for next time. Yeah, for another us, day. Yeah. Are you going to give us a tease of any of the bad or the ugly? Um, well, I think it's best I don't because you just don't know how much might improve over the next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the good well, the good news is there's an over the air update due in the next couple of weeks, so some of your bads, whatever those bads are, might be fixed, but maybe they won't. So it'd be good to know. Like, if you've got an idea of what those bad ones are, you know, how much those have improved. So at least you can yes. say, you know, well, you know, it was bad, but at least it's, you know, got better. Maybe. I don't know. That's, that's what I'm hoping. That's why I don't think I should go into it now. <laughs> cool. Laura, do you want to talk about the MX4? Yeah, so I've been using this as my mostly main phone since, with us in about the weekend of the curry. A week ago or two weeks ago? A week yeah, ago. it was a week, a week and a half ago. Yeah, you had it You had it out like all the time taking photos and stuff. Yeah. And tweeting and Facebooking and stuff for the curry. Yeah. So I've been trying to make sure that anything I do with my phone, I do it on this, unless it's because the app isn't available or something. Um, and the main thing that I can't do on this that I'm doing a lot at the minute is the GPS tracing when I'm running, so... Things like Facebook and Twitter and stuff are fine. So, yeah, the hardware, uh, it's I've called it sleek and minimal and with a curved grey back, um, which it is, and it, I, I like it. Um, and it's got this really nice big screen that's very clear. And I know when we're at the curry, whenever I brought up Facebook or something on the phone, Alan would just go, ooh, that's a nice screen. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, it's quite a big phone compared to mine. Now, um I think this is more, it's actually smaller than um, Martin's normal phone. So it kind of really is a, what you're normal used phone to. Martin's normal phone is a Nexus 6. Yeah. So mine, my normal phone is the Sony Xperia Z1 Compact. So it's the small version of the Z1, Z series. Um, and I prefer that sort of size. So this mm -hmm. is a bit weird to hold and stuff. And single handed is a bit of a stretch, but I can just about do stuff single handedly. Um, but it is a nice weight. And it feels really nice to hold. Um, the power button is at the top, so it's really not convenient <laughs> when I'm used to being able to press it on the side on my own phone, so it's a little bit odd. Um, and bizarrely, the volume buttons work even when the phone's locked. Um, which Is I... that not normal on every phone? Yeah, that ever? happens on my phone. Don't know. Don't think that happens on mine. Because then you don't have to turn it on and unlock the screen if you're listening to music or something. Yeah. Just to turn it off. I don't know of any phone that that doesn't happen on. I think mine restricts it to the music when the music's playing. Yeah. Right. Oh, I see Whereas, what you mean. Ah, yes. Okay. Whereas this, whenever I touch it by accident, it's changing the volume. Right. Right. It's changing the volume of the ringer, I think. Probably. And it will do the same. If there was music playing at the time and you change the volume, it would change the volume of the music. But if it was ringing and you change the volume, it changes the volume of the ring. It's like, yeah. and the same thing happens on iOS as well. I yeah. Think, I think. So, yeah. So I was using the e the BQ e four point five um back in sort of February and March. So I've kind of done some of the initial experience with the swiping and stuff. Um. So a lot of that is kind of not in the front of my mind anymore so much. Um. The one thing that I did realize the last few days that I find a little bit awkward is having to, well, one is having to unlock the phone all the time when the screen, you turn the screen off instead of it letting me just back in without having to type my password. Um, and the other 
just sort of more intrinsically to the UI design is having to swipe out to get the toolbar at the side, which I know is an, an Ubuntu thing. Um, but I only realised this morning that it's sort of an extra swipe on anything I need to do on my other phone. Um, but beyond that, the whole swipey side to side thing and stuff, I actually really like on the Ubuntu phone. Um, and sorry, I'm just opening it. Yeah, and that, that works pretty well. And it, this hardware copes a lot better in terms of responsiveness than the, uh, the E44.5. And it's a nice big screen. Yeah. So that's it's cool. a lot faster machine than the, than the E4.5. It's got eight cores and yeah. three times the RAM. So yeah, it's quite a bit qu quicker. Yeah. And you can tell that when you're using it. I think that was one thing that sort of got a bit frustrating on the E4.5 was just that it wouldn't react all the time. Um, but yeah, this is good. Um, but I do love the getting started wizard. Um, when you first switch it on, on the very first boot, it teaches you how to use the swipe because it's a new UI that people haven't used before. Um, and it does it really nicely. And if you swipe wrongly or you like, you swipe from the wrong place when it tells you to practice, it asks you really gently just to try again. <laughs> I just thought it was really nice. Aww. <laughs> Martin? Um, I was just going to say on the CPU side of things, I think that the um, MX4's got this big li little architecture and the small four cores are um, the same as the quad core processor on the E5. Okay. All right. So four of the four of the processors in the MX4 is equivalent to the four that are in the E4.5. Yeah, and then it's got amazing. Yeah, the, the, another four, yeah. which are bigger. Right. Yeah, four big ones, oh, yeah. Right. Wow. Um, so I have actually made phone calls with this, which is uh, unusual for me um, in that I never make phone calls. Um, and it is really nice and clear. Um, and I have sent and received texts, which works fine. The notifications stopped working, but as of today, I installed the latest update and they're back. So Yay. that's good. Yay. Um, and what I really like, quite like about when you just, it's just sending texts, but you start a text by swiping up from the bottom. There's this little tab that displays on the bottom of the screen and you swipe that up and that's your new text button. And that's a feature that um, you can use in any of the apps, I think, in whatever way suits the app. So some apps use it, some don't. Um, but the Notes app, which connects with Evernote and things, that uses it in the same kind of way. And I really like that because it's not like you've got to press a button, you just sweep up from the bottom and start typing. Um I really I like that. You don't get that on Android, so that's something that sort of has stuck out for me. Go on, Martin. Yeah, I I like that swipe up. And um, o Ogre is the Nick Alan. What's the what's the guy's full Oliver name? Oliver Gravert. Mm. Yeah, he's developed a web app template that uses a swipe up UI to get to back, forward, home, reload um, actions for the web apps. And I've redone some of my web apps using that. And it means that the web apps are really full screen now. And you can swipe up to access those navigational controls. And it makes those web apps feel much better integrated into the device. And I've seen a lot of other of the developers using that template for their apps now. It's um, really nice. Cool. So we're short of time. So I'll just say the camera is awesome. Um I mean, I'm not a photographer, but I like it. It takes nice, clear pictures. And the, some of the pictures I took um, at the Curry came out really well. Um, and I remember being impressed with the details of the camera app itself, the software side, when we are looking at the E4.5 um, earlier in the year. Um, it just feel, felt really well polished and had lots of little features in it that you might not expect in an early version of an app. Um, in comparison with the Gallery app, which feels completely unfinished um and i would really love to have to have more work done on that um so little so the things ga just the like gallery's going away actually and the i think and the the features that are in the gallery are going to be moved to the camera app uh, okay so that makes sense it'll all go in there yeah yeah it, much better. it does feel a bit like a placeholder at the minute the gallery um cool yeah. um and i guess one thing is that the battery life is bizarre <laughs> Um, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. Sometimes I think it's the monitor itself that's screwy rather than the battery life itself. Um, so I need to try and investigate that a little bit more as to what it's doing and then I can report it properly. I think that's a known bug. I think they're on that. I thought it might be. 
Um, okay. So by the time we do next do a show, we might have an update for that anyway. Hope so. Ooh. And I'll talk about apps and things more then. Yeah, if you've got any uh, any thoughts, if you've got one of the Ubuntu phones and you'd like to share your thoughts, then email podcast at... No? Uh, <laughs> show at... Show UbuntuPodcast.org. <laughs> show at UbuntuPodcast.org. Thanks, guys. And that's all for episode 18. We'll be back next week when we'll have more news, comment, discussion, stuff. And hopefully some feedback as well. Yes. Tell us I things. I think I won't be here, actually. <gasps> so you might have to get a, a backup Popey. I'm sure we can find uh, one. That's not going to be... You're not we need a podcast. If only we knew of a podcast super sub. <laughs> Is Samantha yes. going on holiday? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll have to uh, see if someone can look quick. after her for the uh, for the week. <laughs> I'm sure we can find a, a backup Samantha as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, well, have a nice holiday, Popey. Thank you, and thanks for listening, everyone. Yes, indeed. And, um, see you next time. We'll see you next yeah. time. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a nice holiday, Samantha. Bye. Bye. Right, let's end it there. Woohoo!